Hello, thank you for tuning in to this week's SEL topic. Today, we're going to give a brief rundown on the topic of gender and sexuality. My name is Stefano Oliveira, my pronouns are he, him, and I'm a Miracoso graduate from the class of 2020. To start, let's break down what gender and sexuality are. So let's discuss a little bit further on that first one, gender. Gender is made up of a few components. It's made up of your gender identity, your gender expression, and your sex. Sex refers to your physical anatomy and is often categorized into male or female. However, even those categories can have overlap. Some people have XY chromosomes, but an androgen insensitivity or deficiency with the alpha-5 reductase, which may lead to ambiguity with one's sex characteristics. These variations in genetics are referred to as intersex variations. One example of an intersex person is Castor Semenya. She was identified as female at birth and has naturally elevated testosterone levels. Until receiving genetic testing because of her performance in the Olympics, she wasn't aware that she had an intersex variation. Our understanding of sex can change over time as we learn more. Circling back to gender identity, sex plays a role in our gender identity. Some people are happy with their sex and find no issues with it. Some people find discomfort with their sex and seek to alter it to more closely match their gender identity. For a lot of people, their gender identity and sex go hand in hand. It's important to know that it's not just our sex that influences our gender identities. Our gender identities are the unique relationships that we have with gender. We each choose to express our gender identity in different ways. That becomes gender expression. Things like pronouns, terms, clothes, and our bodies can be aspects of our gender expression. A person might feel most comfortable when they have long hair, use she, her pronouns, are referred to as a girl, and wear dresses to represent their gender identity. Some people may like a mix of terms to describe them. That person might like to be called sir, known as a male, but may still prefer they, them pronouns, a gender neutral alternative to he, him. Meanwhile, gender is a social construct that attempts to categorize gender identities into similar categories. Think of how a lot of boys may have a similar experience in being boys. They grow up liking sports, being rambunctious, wearing loose clothes to help them move more, etc. They have a very similar experience with their gender identity and feel comfortable grouping themselves into the category of boys. It's important to remember that not everyone has the same experience of being a boy though. Some boys prefer to be less outspoken and are more shy, read books, and may even like to do some things that are considered girly, like painting nails. This doesn't mean that he's not a boy anymore, it just means that he has a different experience with being a boy than what we've normalized. The same can be true for girls. Think of girls who are really sporty or really hate wearing dresses. They're still girls, they just experience being a girl in a different way. Sometimes, people feel as if their gender identity doesn't match at all with the gender that they were assigned. So they'll identify with a different gender and take steps to have others recognize them as that gender. People who may have an experience like this may consider themselves transgender. Let's take a moment to hear from one of our guest speakers. Hi, I'm Camden. I use he, him pronouns. I graduated from COSTA in 2018 and have since been studying women, gender, and sexuality studies at University of Redlands. I'm a trans man and my identity has provided me with a community that I would have never found otherwise. There's a strong sense of pride and happiness towards other trans people in the community, especially when it comes to transition milestones, such as starting hormones or getting surgeries. That being said, there also can be jealousy amongst trans folks because someone may be further along in their transition than someone who has been out for a longer amount of time. Also, there tends to be a misconception that all trans masculine people want to present stereotypically masculinely and all trans feminine people want to present stereotypically femininely when simply that just isn't the case. Again, someone's gender expression doesn't have to match their gender identity in ways that are traditionally expected. I also wanted to speak on male privilege and the prevalence of it within the trans community. For those who are socialized as male, they are losing privileges when they transition, whereas those who are socialized as female gain those privileges. For example, as I began being perceived as male, other men valued my opinions significantly more than they did when I was presenting as female. At the same time, trans women have to recognize that 
as they become a part of a minority as someone who is both trans and a woman. They do not hold the same power and authority that they used to. Overall, there are many assumptions that are made about trans folks and how they should present and behave that may apply to some people, but not to others. It's important to remember that we can't look at the trans community as a whole without acknowledging that each person has different needs and desires that we must respect. For people who do feel satisfied with the gender that they were assigned at birth, they're considered cisgender. Sometimes we also have people who don't feel comfortable being known as either a boy or a girl. In many cultures, people who didn't fall within the binary were acknowledged, and in some cultures even considered sacred. Just a few examples are as follows. Alaskan Native and many Canadian First Nation communities with Two-Spirit, Hawaii with the Mahu, Samoa the Fa'afafine, Tonga with Fa'afafine or Fa'kaliti, and in the Marshall Islands, the Kakol. Mesopotamia and Egypt also thought of their gods as gender fluid, with human beings considered reflections of those gods. For someone to feel that fluidity was seen as being closer to the gods. Then, in Western cultures like ours, we're starting to recognize that maybe we should embrace more fluidity between the binary genders, and even make space for people who don't feel as if they exist within that binary as well. People who feel as if their gender identity doesn't fall neatly within the male or female categories may consider themselves non-binary. Let's take a moment to hear from one of our guest speakers. Hey friends, my name is Jason Boxer. I am a COSTA alum. I graduated in 2011. And um, as of this past November, I am the first openly non-binary person to have been elected to our school board here in Manhattan Beach. Um, Stefan asked me if I could send a quick video over explaining what that term means, non-binary. And it is a term that kind of defies easy definition, uh, as most of these gender terms do, you know, even male and female can get a little murky as we begin to interrogate them. Um, but what it means for me is that I carry behaviors and, you know, preferences and habits and hobbies and, and my general personality um, can be sort of described with... Uh, adjectives or descriptors that you would normally pull from both of the traditional gender categories, right? Um, it would be, uh, the, the way I carry myself and the way I live my life doesn't necessarily fit neat description as male or female. Uh, so I go with non-binary because that is more authentic and accurate for me. Because of that, and to sort of, you know, clarify that for people, I use they and them as my third person pronouns. Uh, being non-binary is not a political ideology. It's not an effort to disagree with anybody or reject anybody's philosophy. It's um, a simple expression of self, you know, trying to make sure people see and, and recognize you for who you are. Uh, if you have questions about anything uh, regarding this, or if you, you know, hear that I made some vote in a board meeting and you're like, that's the dumbest vote ever. I hope you'll uh, reach out to me. I would love to talk. Um, it was only 10 years ago that I was sitting in your shoes, in your desks. Uh, I'm on Instagram at Jason underscore MBUSD. I would love to talk. See ya. Now we're going to take a moment to hear about sexuality from the 2020 to 2021 Maricosa High School GSA President Haley Balin and Vice President Alexandra Reynolds. Hello. My name is Alexandra Reynolds. I use any pronouns, and I'm a part of the Miracosta class of 2021. I'm the GSA Vice President. And my name is Haley Balin. I use they them pronouns, and I'm part of the Miracosta class of 2021, and I'm the president of the Miracosta GSA. I'm here to talk a little bit about sexuality today. Sexuality can be an incredibly fluid experience. Just like gender, everyone's experience with sexuality is unique to them, but we have a few common terms that are used to group similar experiences together. Many of us know about the terms straight and gay, or heterosexual and homosexual. Someone who is straight or heterosexual is attracted to people with a different gender than theirs. Someone who's gay or homosexual is some attracted to someone who has the same gender as they do. It's important to remember that these sexualities can also include someone who's non-binary, since their identity isn't necessarily an opposite or same gender as their partners. 
The term lesbian arose because the experience of not being a man and not being attracted to men is very unique experience. Now we're going to take a moment to listen to one of our guest speakers. Hey, um, my name is Jillian, and while I do prefer the nickname Lee, um, either is fine. I identify as lesbian, um, and a lot of you should remember that from last year's cell assembly, where I came out in front of everyone. Um, and as you guys probably saw from that, I've always been pretty open and out and proud about who I am. I think I've always known who I am, um, which I think is why it's important for me to share. Because when I was younger, my parents always told me, through no fault of their own, that I would find a nice man and he would be smart and funny and kind. And if I was lucky, he'd be handsome. And then my mom would look at my dad and say that she got lucky. And then it wasn't really until the transition from middle school to high school that I realized that wasn't what I wanted at all. And so that's when I began exploring my own sexuality. And so I figured out that I am a lesbian. Um, that means that when I grow up, I'm going to have a wife. I'm not going to have a husband. And it's not... A choice that people have. It's not I suddenly woke up one day and decided, oh, I'm going to be gay today. It's sort of, it's like, is my, is my hair brown? Um, do I have freckles? It's just kind of something like that that's just ingrained in who a person is. And I think it's, I think I've taken it to a whole nother level of owning it and being out about it, and while that isn't necessary, I think it's really helped me come to terms with who I am, and so I say to people who might be questioning, or people who already know what they are, um, you have my support, you are strong, you are um, unbelievably powerful, you are incredible, you can do anything, and just to everyone, just remember to be respectful, because people are coming to terms with who they are during high school. And it can be hard and it can be messy, but just remember. Some people experience attraction to two or more genders as well. This is considered bisexuality. Let's hear from another guest speaker. Hi, I'm Megan. My pronouns are she, her, hers, and I am bisexual. And basically what that means is that my sexual attraction is not limited to one specific gender. So I've been with both boys and girls. And if there's one thing that I'd want people to know about bisexuality, it's that you don't have to feel like 50-50, you know, 50% into women and 50% into men. Uh, it's a whole spectrum, just like a lot of other things. And people can fall anywhere along that spectrum. We also have pansexuality, which can be described as an attraction to all genders. It seems as if that's all we have time for today. If you have any follow-up questions, please make sure you mention those in the Google form that your teacher should share with you after this video. We'll be answering the questions that you send into the Google form in our next video. If you want to contact any of us specifically, here are some ways you can reach us. Here are some other resources that you can reach out to locally for additional support if you need it. We'll leave those up for a second for you to take a screenshot if you need to or write it down. Regardless, thank you to those of you who have listened in on this segment and thought a little about this topic. Thank you, everyone.